creator and uh, you know dual fan setup. Well, Alloy Works reached out to me and they asked me to show you guys how to hook up the fan relay. Okay, and you know that includes the little thermostat switch here to turn the fans on and off. Uh, apparently, a lot of their customers have had an issue with that. Uh, this setup does not come with instructions, so I was like, yeah, we'll throw together a uh, little separate video real quick. Uh, I'm not using this because I am using my Holly computer to turn the fans on and off uh, and a factory relay that I already had wired up. So uh, that's why I didn't go over that in the first video, but I'm going to show you real quick how to hook all this up and also give you a few recommendations that I have passed on to Alloy Works as far as... Uh, you know, maybe upgrading this setup a little bit. So I wanna say before I get started, I mean, this is just a basic relay setup right here. Um, you know, most people, most people know how to hook up a basic relay. It's when you throw this guy, your little uh, uh, temperature switch, when you throw that into the mix, I think that's what's confusing some people. Uh, also, the way the ground wire is designed is uh, kind of confusing. I actually watched another video where a guy was doing a, uh, well, I guess it was like a review of this same setup, and he did some crazy stuff with his ground wire, which made zero sense. Um, the way they had this loop in here makes zero sense, too. So we're going to go over that. Uh, I'm going to go over here to my, my whiteboard, my little dry erase board, and we'll go ahead and show you how to wire this up. Before I do, I want you to keep in mind on the fan, we have a blue wire and we have a black wire. Blue wire is obviously for power. Black wire is obviously for ground. All right, so hopefully everyone can see this okay. Uh, I don't know, I'm not behind the camera, so I don't know, but here's what we got. We have our relay right here. This is our relay, okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and label or terminals here so at the back we've got a 87 terminal at the front we've got our 30 over here on the left we've got our 86 and over here we got our 85 so terminal 30 has a red wire terminal 86 no wait terminal 87 uh, now this is just on alloy work setup okay just so you guys know uh terminal 87 has a blue wire terminal 85 has a black wire because it is technically ground we'll go over that in a second and uh terminal 86 here actually let's see here uh i think it actually has a white wire okay my bad guys terminal 85 actually has a white wire on their setup here i was looking at the relay backward and that's what kind of threw me off uh we're going to use green as white because obviously i can't write uh on a white board with white okay and 86 is the ground okay so here's what we're doing guys make this nice and simple Terminal 30, the red wire, has the fuse in line. That is gonna go to your battery, okay? We want that hot all the time. Terminal 87 is going to go to your blue wire on your cooling fan. So that is your fan power, okay? Okay, your white wire, which you were using green, uh, you know, instead of white, for reasons I've already stated, obvious reasons, uh, that is gonna go to a switched ignition source. Something like that. Sloppy handwriting, right? All right, so here we go. This is what we got so far. This is your standard relay setup that you would always use, you know, 30 to battery, 87, blue wire, to power the fans, uh, 85, the white wire, goes to a switched ignition source. You can run 85 to the battery wire too. The problem with that is if you run 85 to a battery wire, 
anytime your temperature of your engine is above whatever this little switch here is set for, that fan's gonna keep running whether the key's on or not. So it's very important that you run 85 to a switched ignition, okay? Now, here's where apparently there was some confusion on some of the other videos I saw. Terminal 86, I'm gonna get behind my camera here so I can, I'm gonna get behind my camera here so I can kind of see what I'm showing you. Terminal 86, that is this ground wire right here, okay? I saw a video where a guy hooked this loop up to ground and actually ran the grounds off the cooling fans into this wire as well. That is wrong, dead wrong. If you do that, it's gonna keep this relay active all the time, okay? And it's gonna completely do away with this guy altogether. The whole point of this switch right here is to ground out pin 86 when your engine reaches a specific temperature. Now, with Alloy Works kit, the little temperature probe that you get here, it is set to uh, ground out the relay at 85 or 185 degrees and then it turns it back turns the fans back off at 165 degrees so something you need to realize is you need to run a 160 degree thermostat when you're running this kit with this switch if you do not your fans will never kick off like once your engine gets warmed up if you've got a 185 or a 195 thermostat your engine is never going to get cool enough for the fans to shut back off okay so now that I've made that clear, obviously, I just answered the question, the black wire is going to go to this coolant temp sensor slash switch to coolant switch. Okay, that's where it goes. Where does this guy go? This guy goes in a cylinder head or an intake manifold uh, with coolant flowing through it. You know, I, I work mainly with LS engines, guys, so I always uh, drill and tap the passenger side cylinder head for a 3 8 That's where this would go if I was using it on my engine in a small block Chevy. Um, you know, you can put it in the little coolant crossover passage at the front of the intake manifold if you like, or you can put it in a cylinder head. Uh, I prefer cylinder head but anyway that's where it goes this is how you hook it up guys it's real simple if you hook it up like this um like i said the fans are only going to be capable of running when you have the key forward um and again you know when this switch sees that the coolant temp is above 185 degrees um that's going to get your fans running now one thing i want to go over and this is an issue Number one, like I said, disregard this loop, okay? This loop doesn't even need to be in here. What you need to do is just cut this off and patch in some wire. You know, they give you some fittings and a fuse and everything in the kit. You're probably going to need uh, more connectors than what they're giving you. But you just need to get rid of this loop. This black wire needs to run straight to your switch. I'm saying that over and over again because I know people are going to miss that. They're going to keep asking me, uh, you know, <laughs> no matter how many times I do these videos, no matter how simple they are, I, I keep getting questions that are already answered in the video. So uh, there's your answer to that. Now, the issue I have with this setup, uh, this relay, this will work great for a single fan. Uh, I believe the wires in here, I can't really tell. I want to say they're 12 gauge. They've got really thick insulation, so it kind of throws me off, but they might only be 14 gauge. Either way it goes, these wires are not thick enough to run dual fans, guys. I would not wire this up to a dual fan setup like what we have here. What I would recommend is either running a second relay and have one relay for each fan. And if you did that, um, basically all that would happen is you would have a fan power wire. You would wire it the same way, except for you would tie together your coolant switch wire and your switched ignition wire. Those would run to the same places, okay? So you could tie those together off both relays. 
but then you know each relay's fan power wire one relay would go to each fan and then both your battery wires would go to the battery okay that's the only difference now if you want to just run a single relay what you can do is you can depin this relay the only wires you need to worry about are pin 30 the red wire and pin 87 the blue wire you can pull these back out and crimp in probably some 10 gauge wire would be good enough once you did that it should be able to carry enough load to run both these cooling fans without having to worry about wires melting things like that uh, they do give you a 30 amp fuse which technically should be enough for you know the small fans that come with their kits here but i don't know guys that's why i would i would prefer to run dual relay setup and if you do run a dual relay setup and if you decide to run it off your computer instead of off one of these switches um you can actually set the fans to come on at different temps um or you could you could actually run two of these switches with uh you know two different temps but i'm not going to get into all that in this video the whole purpose of this video was just for me to show alloy works customers how to hook this up and there you go guys i mean it doesn't get much easier than that once again so you guys know and i'm not even going to worry about the pin numbers we're just going to go by the color code because all the alloy works relay kits uh, are set up this same way so last time blue wire goes to fan power black wire goes to your switch in your head or intake manifold white wire goes to a 12 volt switched ignition source that's that's power that comes on when you turn the key on and of course red is kind of universal it goes straight to your battery the only other thing you need to know about hooking the fans up is your ground wire here you just need to run that to a, a nice solid chassis ground usually you're going to ground it out somewhere on your your radiator support something like that now remember i said to cut this off of this well that's perfect for that guys you could snip it off right here and you could use this length of wire butt connect it or solder it or whatever to this guy or even just you know put a female connector on and plug that in although i wouldn't recommend it corrosion could get in there but uh then there you go you've got a loop that you can run to the ground on your radiator support so that's it guys that's how you hook up the alloy works uh fan relay and temperature switch kit uh, you can buy this kit separately from alloy works it's only like 12 bucks it comes with the you know with the sensor and the harness here and everything i'll put a link in the description of this video in case you want to purchase one of these uh just in case you know maybe you didn't buy this or in case you're wanting to purchase a second one so you can hook up two relays as i explained earlier so anyway uh that's all i got for you get out in the garage get something done and i'll see you next time here on bad luck garage